You know no clipping in video games? You know that thing where you just accidentally fall through the floor? You know, it happens. Well, what if that happened in real life? Where would we go? Well, this series explains it. This is The Backrooms. It's an analog horror series about exactly that. The place where you go and you fall through the world. And trust me, it is terrifying. And in this video, I watched absolutely everything so far on the series. So, if you do enjoy this, please feel free to subscribe. I'm going to be making sure that I watch everything to do with The Backrooms over on my Twitch. So, if for whatever reason you have to miss that live, subscribe to this channel so you won't miss it. Anyways, all that being said, I hope you enjoy this stream. Let's watch... Some of the backrooms. Some of that found footage. Right. The first one is nine minutes long. Let's go for it. I've never watched the backrooms. I know a bit about it. Uh, from what I know, it's based on some source game. Because in one of the source games, you could fall down into the backrooms of the game. But then it became like this sort of creepypasta. Like, what if it was real life? What if, like, in real life, you could just, you could just like, no clip through the fucking cracks in, like, the, the geometry. And you could just fall into the fucking, uh, like... It's based, it's based, guys, it's based, it's based, it's based. Um, you could, like, oh, it's, like, based off the idea that you could, like, no-clip through surfaces and shit. Uh, you didn't upload it in chronological audio, so you might want to watch the playlist. All right, sure, we can do that. I suppose that would make more sense. Hey, Jack, I finished with uni and want to thank you for being a great source of entertainment during the stress of uni. You the are news, I made more than welcome. Some? What was that? If I might want what? Another news, I made a banana bread. Do you want some? I'm alright, thank you. Banana bread is not bad. It's not bad at all. But yeah, no, no, no. Like, people, like, basically no-clip through the ground, and they fall into the back rooms, which is essentially, like, like, you know, like, unused... So in games, because it's all, it's all based off of gaming and gaming, uh, but you know in gaming? You know, you know gaming? Um, how you can, like, fall... Through the geometry and like underneath is like usually unused like um like map sort of geometry and stuff. Unused game assets, thank you. I couldn't think of the word for the life of me. Um like you basically what if you just fell through into them in real life and then you're just stuck in the unused assets of fucking the world? I thought it was based off real life stories. Yeah, yeah, real people really did do that. That's real, that's real. Really happened. Actually really happened. Like the FNAF speedrun. Yeah, yeah, like when I used to speedrun FNAF, I used to go into like the unused areas. Speaking of which, I might do some more Poppy Playtime speedruns because those were kind of fun as well. But yes, anyway. Let's get this watch. Sound? Camera? Rolling. All right, and action. All right, cut. Cut. That was good. That was good, guys. All right, uh, that was good. I'm thinking we get a wide angle and then we're done. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. cool. Like how much further? Like uh, a little more. Right. A little more. That? Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. He just slips through. You know what I mean? He slips through. This just reminds me of like Source. Thank you for everything. Source games. I don't know what it is. It's like there's maps like this on Gmod and stuff. Alex Beanbag. Thank you for the ten months. But yeah, it just it's just got Gmod vibes. Hello? It's cool that he managed to find a Hello? space like this, though. Because, like, surely he had to find, like, a, an office space like this to film in. Hey, guys. Trash actors, not gonna lie. Yeah, they weren't great. They weren't great, I'll be honest. The monkey the monkey guy was not great. It was a monkey, right? Whatever the thing crawling along the side was. It's animated. Oh, it is? Oh, wild. It's really well animated. Holy shit. Really well animated. Fucking hell. I mean, it makes sense, because I'm like, this This space team's like too big to find a real life version. Really well done. I, I guess the lighting's a little bit off. Hello? Now you've like, pointed it out. Is someone there? I like to though. That's wild though, it's all CGI. Now I'm looking at it, like, I get it. But, you know. goes on forever, man. It's like a liminal space, isn't it? No, they filmed that, I swear. They really went here! They really went here! It's real life, it's real life, it's real life. You know, you pointed out this is impossible, but like, when it first showed up, I thought it could have been a real space. Fuck! My foot hurts. That, that toe from earlier. It's got a real b bad shooting pain on it. I think I actually did fuck it up really badly. 
If I end up with a boot on, I wouldn't be shocked. I think I might have broken a, like a bone in my foot. Definitely my toe, but I, I brought that toe before. It's on the end of the world. Get the ice pack. Oh, I might actually. Are yeah, you guys good waiting? Are you guys good? I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll give you some music. I'll give you some tunage. I'll give you some uh, crazy tunage. Um, let's see, what's some, what's some crazy tunage? I can give you some crazy tunes while I wait. I know you like my music taste. Anyway, anyway, I do really like that song. That's fucking amazing. Good song. Good, good song. Um, right. Oh, I'm trying to wedge, like, the ice pack onto my toe without, like, hurting it. Right, we got it. Oh, yeah, shit. There you go. Sorry. Good job. Yeah, we're back into it. Oh, that's hurt my leg. Is that making my, like, calf cramp up? So I'm, like, sat with it weird. I don't know if my last question went through, but I've been wondering for a while. Thanks, mate. Can um, anybody hear me? You didn't attach a question. I don't know if my last question went through. Oh, it's it's you're taking the piss because uh, the same person did it earlier. Hey, Jack, weird question. How do you feel about blank? Okay, good, good meme, good meme, good meme. Hello. God damn it. Prezo just replied to my. I I recently caved just before we move on. I recently caved and downloaded B Real. You know the app B Real that everyone fucking had. I, I was saying it how it was weirdly dystopian and strange and I didn't like it. Because it's like everyone shares what they're doing with their friend once a day. It's like it's weirdly intrusive and it like, and like, it, it, I feel like bad, like everyone's doing shit and I feel bad if I just have like a, like a day where I just lay in bed, you know what I mean? And like the whole thing just felt really dystopian and strange to me. But anyway, I, I, I all my friends had it and I met, my, I met with my brother yesterday and we went for a meal and he had it and everyone there had it and they were all taking the picture and I felt really left out. So I, I eventually like... I, uh, I, you know what, I, I just caved and I downloaded it, right? And I added a bunch of people, I added a shit ton of people, one of which was Prezo. And Prezo replied to my B-reel today, but you're fucking disgusting. And I'm very annoyed, because at the time, I just, just, just stubbed my toe. So I took a picture of my bleeding, swollen toe, and, and, and made, but the notification came through, right, as my toe was bleeding. I was like, fuck it, this is the most relevant thing in my life right now. Anyway, it got lots of, uh, it got lots of comments. Uh, the only one that I really like is Average Harry replying, I lost. Uh, but the rest, you know, everyone else was really upset. Um, but you know, I don't get why. I don't get why. But at, at the end of the day, I think pressure me into downloading an app, right? Then, you know, don't be upset when you don't like what you see. At the end of the day. Don't be, don't be upset when you don't like what you see on my B-Reel. Anyway, sorry. Just had to get that rant out. I also uploaded mine late because I didn't see the notification, but I swear I only ca I only got the notification like 27 minutes afterwards. So it's 27 minutes late, but I posted it the second I got the notification. Maybe Wi-Fi was weird or something, I don't know. For free? They're all my friends. I only add my friends on there, so... You know. They've all seen me toes once or twice. Did I have something on my chin? I think I've just wiped it. Whatever was there was... Oh, no, no, it's still there. Anyway, he's just wandering around. Did he go up the ladder in the end? There was a ladder. Oh, he did. Okay. I kind of... I, 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 my brain tuned out after the ladder. That's okay. Thank you for four months. Dogs out for free. Hey, I, I can't... I'm not in control of that anymore. Anytime I see Ginelli and I've got my feet out, she takes a picture of them. She has the main bank of manifold feet pics. So if you... I mean... I was about to say, if you need them, ask Gene Nelson, but please don't, actually. She won't send them you. Weirdos. Fuck. Can anybody hear me? Nah, mate. Hello? I mean, I can, but, you know. God damn it.
You keep missing it. Am I? Oh, there's arrows now. Like drawn on the walls. Interesting. So go back and look at the right corner of uh, when. Where? I'm not saying look at the right corner. I'm not seeing anything though. Okay. Guess we'll just leave it. If I missed it, I missed okay. it. I was gonna go to Binley Mega Chippy, but I I, I, I ran out of time to do it, man. I'm upset. <laughs> Meme's kind of dying now. Oh, it's a face. Looks like fucking 2D from Gorillas. Don't move. Stay still. Oh, guess they made a mistake. That is a creature of some kind. Yeah, that evil creature is chasing them. <laughs> that siren head? Bro didn't listen. Bro did not listen. Should he stop moving now? Like it said, stay still. Should he stop moving now? Will it catch him if he just stops moving? Onto the next level. Okay. So that was the back rooms like I know and love. Like I, I've seen those ones before. Like that sort of like weird office block kind of yellowy tinged building. Never seen this one. Oh, that's his shadow. Okay. This is my favorite liminal space, this one. Oh, hold on, so did he go, sorry, I looked away for a second. So he goes up to the top, and lights, okay. It's funny, because he's going upstairs, but will this lead him back up? Because he didn't drop that far. Oh, oh, this one's interesting. It's like a hotel block. It's like one of those hotels that has like a courtyard. You know, like all the hotel rooms are around. There's like a courtyard in the middle. I went into one. I stayed in one of those for the first time recently. It really weirded me out because there's not many of them in the UK. But there's a fair few in the US. The fuck is this? That rope looks like a penis. Look at the. Look at it. It's laid out on the floor like a uh, like a dick. It look. It's a it's a shaft and then two balls. There's a there's a there's a ball here and a ball here and then a, a big long shaft. It's crazy. Also, yes, a dumpster. This one's like a house of some kind, but like a hotel. <laughs> oh, don't cough. Was that just a gap? There's no like way across, it's a gap. Oh, what the fuck? What the fuck? That's what I'm saying. What the that, that's what I'm saying. This isn't real. This isn't real. This, this isn't real. Thank you for the tier one. Yes, I guess. I don't really want to agree with you in case you're saying yes to a bad thing. How do I know? The camera motion is very well animated. Not perfect, but really well done. 
Oh, so you can get back up here. Okay, interesting. Isn't that FNAF ambient noise? Like the fan? I'd recognize that very well. I've played a lot of FNAF. People who come up with these must have very wild brains. Yeah, that's why I've never made a series like this. I'd love to make something like this, because I love camera work, and I love, like, like production. I love shit like that, but I, I don't have the brain to come up with a series. I'm more than willing to give help on one, though. Oh, that's cold. Fuck. Fuck! What was that? What was that? I was like, my foot was being cold. Did it throw a chair? Okay, I did. Is that another creature? Oh no, it's the same creature. Is it Siren Head? I can't work out what it is. Why is he moving? Why are you moving, moron? Okay, at least that's a way down. Oh, fucking hell! Saw that happening. Oh, what the fuck? Wait, what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Is that the real world again, or is this still part of the back rooms? Oh yeah, he's dead, for sure. He's dead for sure, for sure. But like... I wanna look at the creature. I wanna look at the creature, but like it's... It's very blurry. What is it? Oh, the camera got pushed out of his hand. Oh, he got taken, the, just the camera fell. Okay, so he definitely got taken. The camera falls, and it ends up in the real world again? Weird. Interesting. What is the creature, though? That's what I'm trying to work out. It's weird. Weird fucking thing. Alright, anyway. Next episode, I guess. March 1190. Archive.raw. They are not accessible. Oh. oh. That's some, like, PS2 fucking memory card bullshit. I used to hate the PS2's fucking menu. It was terrifying. I used to be like terror, like like just just quickly, just before we move on to the next episode. This shit, right? This used to fucking this happened to my PlayStation a few times because I had a certain disc um, that was broken. This used to scare the shit out of me. Fucking red screen of death. I got red screen of death all the time on my PlayStation Two, and I got red ring of death on my Xbox once. That shit used to fucking terrify me. Isn't it creepy? Like the sound effects and... Like bearing in mind what you're expecting. It's because it subverts expectation, right? Like I never had a PS1, so I don't know... Like, so the PS1 with the PS1... I never watched... Had the PS1, so I don't know how it started out. But yeah, the PS1 started like this. And it did this. With no disc, it did this. And it went to there. Which is like, that's fair enough. Right? The PlayStation 2 used to fucking scare me. Like, even this is a little bit like weird fucking like liminal space bullshit. It's a bit eerie, but like it's not necessarily scary per se. And then it does that, and that's perfectly friendly. Right? This was like. This is into a PS1 game, I believe. Fine. I, I remember that. I had a lot of PS1 games I got gifted to me. And then this! Like, bearing in mind what you were expecting, right? 
Bearing in mind what you're expecting, it used to linger on this for long. And then this fucking, like, deep note plays, and it's fucking red. Like, it, it, it had no business being that scary. No business. I hate it. PlayStation 2 with no disc. This was fine. This was okay. It was weird, though, don't you think? I always thought it was a weird menu. I always thought it was a very strange, like, menu. Just the design of it. I just always thought it was weird. PSX. What was PSX? What the fuck is PSX? Guys, what the fuck is PSX? I thought PSX was play PS1, but like... What the fuck is a PSX? Alright, I know we're getting sidetracked here, but now I need to know what that is, and then we can move on. No, not the Pakistan Stock Exchange. Sony. The fuck was this? PSX is a Sony digital video recorder with a fully integrated PS2 home video console. The fuck? Wait, so it was like a PS2, but also... You could... Watch TV? Is that what I'm getting from this? I never heard of this. That is so- but that- look- how friendly is that comparatively to the fucking PS2? That's so friendly! At least after the PS2 they got like so much fucking more friendly. How did it change after that? Oh, I changed color. Interesting. Never had a PS3. I always had a. Uh, I had a. Uh, 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 I had a PS2, and then I went on to Xbox. Anyway, I'm done now. Sorry, I'm done now. I realized. I realized we like got fucking. Just I got sidetracked. It reminded me of the PS2. It, it doesn't fill me with the joyous whimsy. It actually fills me with like anxiety. I used to be so scared of early consoles. I, I used to have anxiety dreams where, like, they have a mind of their own. And, like, the red screen of death is, like, roughly at doing that. Because, like, I, I, I'm like, hey, play my game, and it wasn't doing what I told it to. Like, things not doing what I told them to used to fucking terrify me in terms of technology, right? So, like, I used to be so fucking... I used to have anxiety dreams all the time when I was a kid about the fucking consoles. And then the PS2 just really set that off in me. I used to have it about the Wii and everything, but the PS2 was just the worst one I found. Anyway, so no Joyce Whimsy, just an anxiety fucking flush. Anyway, let's see what this is. Yeah, this is some PS2 bullshit. This is very loud, and I don't like how loud it is. I'm gonna turn it down just a touch, because if anything scary happens, it's gonna deafen me. Scared of gaming is now a gamer for a living. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, how the table's turned. Is that like a map of the backgrounds or something? It's like a pool? I really like the PS2. Maybe I could make an analog horror about a PS2. That'd be fun. Wait, thank you for the person who just gave me that idea. Thank you for playing on my fears. Wait, hold on. Hmm. I would love to work on a project like this. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. I would love to work on an analog horror series. I think I'd, I think I'd be okay at it. If I had the like the creative vision, I think I would be able to make something cool. What is this? So these guys are computers, and this guy is like wiring and shit. I think before I like. I'm done with content creation. I want to have a series to my name that everyone goes, that's really fucking cool. Like the Mandela. Just something there. It's like a, it's like a very serious, well-produced series that everyone goes, yes. 
Maybe it will be. Bearing in mind, I'm the, like, I do a lot of analog horror stuff. Maybe it should be that. They're studying the back rooms, I think. Yeah, maybe. Oh, there they are. They are in the back rooms. Yeah, shit. You should do it. ARG, please. Maybe. Also, series like this just have infinite rewatchability. Null zone. What does that say? Due, due to the electric... Due to the electrical discrepancy between panel... Field K has been created. Couldn't quite read that. Oh, there's some bullshit. Well, this one's getting very clear. Savvy Bath, thank you for the pound. Maybe I will. But, okay, this is the next episode. It's playing automatically. Oh, yeah, so they are testing the back rooms. Interesting. It says elevation discrepancy. Oh, okay. Maybe I will. Maybe I will work on something. I don't know. It'll take some time. It won't be out soon, obviously, because I've got to come up with ideas and stuff. But, you know. On July 2nd, 1988, the ASIN Research Facility tested its low proximity magnetic distortion system for the third time. Details regarding the results of the experimentation have not yet been released. During a press conference held in April of 1988, Ivan Beck Price, director of the ASIN Foundation, described the intention of these tests, stating this program is granted sufficient backing from the United States government will offer a solution to all current I don't like voices like this at all. And he sounds like he's holding back a yawn. What was I supposed to do? Hold on, Nikki's calling me. Hello. Hi. I want to watch Pets Go. But I'm not right now. Because I'm live. Yeah. No, we've got enough left to do a, like a dedicated stream to it. We've got like hours left. Okay, we should do that soon. We will. I mean, I'm going to back home, so we'll probably have. To, ooh, might be a while actually. Should have done it today. Actually, now I, I now I thought about it. I should have done it today. Okay, well that's fine. We'll do it when you come back then. Yeah. No, I think we should do it when I get back. All right. Try to invite Niall too. There's an ear for everyone um, at home. Oh, wait. Oh, you're live as well? I am. All right, anyways, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. We'll watch it. We'll watch it soon, though. We should watch it soon. We should. All right. No worries. All right, bye. Have a good right. stream. Bye. Bye. I didn't say have a good stream to her. Now I feel bad. No, I hope it isn't as good as mine. I hope my stream is the superior stream and I maintain more viewership, more subs. Basically, stay on top of the game. Yep, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I hope for me. Anyway. I'm being cruel. I'm joking. Oh, okay, so they want to use it for storage and property because it's just basically extra land that we didn't know existed.
But what are they doing? What So what are they using? They're using... What's it called again? It's Low Proximity Magnetic Distortion System. But what does that mean? Why, why would that have an effect? So I'm trying to work out. So they're trying to open up a way to get into the back room. So that's like a portal or like a doorway or something in. That's like surefire. Because obviously people are accidentally falling in and shit, but they want a surefire way out. What's this? Okay. Test six. Okay. Modifications. Triple support beam on internal chamber 23A. Introduce 13 additional IF cavities. Introduce into replace detectors. I'm just gonna be okay. None of it makes sense. That's fine. Oh, okay. This thing again. Good. Oh, it doesn't seem good. It seems to be working, but it also seems to be breaking. I'll be honest, that wasn't the best green screen dust effect right at the top there. <laughs> out of everything I've seen on this video, everything's been really great. That wasn't the best. Worked. Holy shit, they actually opened up a doorway. Nicholas Bolton, I assume that's the guy who went missing in the first place. I'm gonna guess. Margaret Watson. Never mind, it might not be, they might just be unrelated. Missing reward, call 925-322-0136. Missing, Alice White. Aww. Bless him, he's two years old. Fucking hell. Janice Scott. Poor missing persons cases. I assume that blue line is when they open the portal. Because they try in 1988, right? Because we watched that video and there's a slight, there's a weird increase there. Right towards the end of 1988, which is when the third experiment happened, right? But I assume the successful experiment, experiment six, is the blue line. That's what I'm going to guess. Seems whatever they're doing has an effect on, like, 
the real world and accident that can cause people to fall through. Everything always goes wrong in 1987. <laughs> what does no clipping mean? It means like phasing through uh, like like solid walls and objects. It's a, it's a it's a source engine term. It's what happens in like GMod and Half Life. You can go into no clip mode and you'll just you won't like have any collision. Nikki, thank you for the rate of a thousand and six. Appreciate it. Welcome, Nikki viewers. We're watching uh, the back rooms. I've never watched it before. We've been watching Analog Horror already. Um, and we just started. Also, you uh, can't fucking read. Yoshi Tato, thank you so much for the tier one. We've hit 100 subs today. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Seriously, it means a lot. Katie Lizard, thank you for the 16 months as well. Yeah, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Sorry, if, if I sound like I'm in pain, it's because I, I, I think I broke my toe this morning. I'm not too sure. I stubbed it real hard. It started bleeding. Um, and I'm in a lot of pain. I've got an ice pack on it. I've taken it off right now, but um, I had an ice pack on it. Uh, but it's just a bit painful. But thank you for the raid. I really appreciate it. I don't know. I've never seen this thing go. I need to be part of the environment. I can't hear what they're saying. Is this subtitles? There's no. not. Hold there's it. no subtitles. Shit. Okay. So the video is just of them walking along. They're traipsing a wire. Okay. So I got distracted by the raid. Oh, my foot. Fucking hell. It's not in my toes, it's further down my foot that hurts, which is the problem. Fun fact, if you actually go to the back rooms, everyone that knows or saw you will forget you completely. That doesn't really logically make sense, does it? Because the missing persons cases then don't make sense. Because bear in mind that people are reporting people missing, surely they do remember them, right? Hold it. You should take some painkillers. I should take some painkillers, actually. That's a very good shout. I don't think I need to go to A&E um, unless my, the rest of my foot gets worse. I did the exact same thing to this toe years back, and it went completely black. And I, I do think I broke it, but in the exact same breath, with a little, it's my little toe, and with a little toe, there is quite literally nothing that can be done to, like, fix it. it, it they, they, I, if I go to A&E, they'll be like, yeah, just leave it if it hurts. There's nothing you can do. If it's further down my foot, I need to go get a boot put on it. But if it is just my toe, which as of right now, I think I might have just bruise the rest of my foot. Um, then there's no reason going to get it checked out just because they can't do anything. Um, you know, there's literally nothing they can do for a broken little toe. The, the, the bones are so delicate, you know. But yeah, anyway, they don't bandage it. No, they'll literally leave it. There's nothing they can do. There's no point. But yeah, there's just not much they can do. So I, I, there's no need to concern for me. It's like if it's the rest of my foot, it's it's a problem. But I'm gonna um, have a sleep. Uh, and I'm heading back to Mansfield tomorrow. So when I'm in Mansfield, if by the time I get off the train, it's still giving me a grief, I might, I might go to the hospital in Mansfield, but I'm not going to go while I'm in Brighton because it's just going to inconvenience me a bit much know. for I've never seen this like, what it is. I may just be part of the environment. Oh, they found someone, yeah. Oh, he's been fucked up. Is that the first guy? Would make sense. This wasn't in the last report. No, this is this is definitely new. It's, it's organic. It's some kind of fungus. Oh, you just moved his head. That fucking scared the life out of me. If anybody blame him. Ooh. Interessant. Who's being blamed? What for? That's interesting. What happened for people to be blamed? John Doe autopsy report. I assume that's the, the guy. Subject is male. Uh, yeah, somewhere between 18 and 21 years old. I estimate that the time of death was around five days ago, but due to the severe tissue damage, it's it's hard to say for sure. Yeah. 
cause of death was likely malnutrition. I was able to recover most of the digestive tract. Interesting. Because that's not how the body looked when they found it. So does that imply that he killed those guys? And then he was found later? I figured they took him in straight away, but he looks in worse condition. So, years ago, things start to deviate from what we would consider to be natural. The decomposition process appears to have been stunted somehow. It, it's like, it's like portions of the body stopped decaying and, and were sustained. Other areas... The voice acting in this is quite a bit better than most Analog Horror series, so I give them thumbs up for that, because Analog Horror... The, the meme about the uh, voice acting being kind of poor is kind of true. However, we're completely overtaken by culture. So, uh, I took uh, samples of some of the material here. <clears throat> First, I, I thought it was... Uh, an aggregated collection of pseudomenus fluorescence, but uh, it seems to be closer to a mutated strain of simple hay bacillus, which it should be completely benign, but well, really, I, I, I don't know what to make of this. <coughs> Mr. Beck, may I ask? Uh, where this subject came from. Hello. Luna, you have a problem. Some Mandela catalog bullshit. Why was Reagan in there? Ronald Reagan was just in there for some reason. You say Reagan allowed all this? Say this is what Ronald Reagan did? Knew we shouldn't have trusted that guy. Should have never let that guy in. Because he did this. This is Ronald Reagan's point. It, you know, if anyone blame him, you know who was talking about? Ronald Reagan. If anyone blame him. Well... Well, I didn't know the back rooms would be so evil, and well, I thought it'd be better for housing, and well. Welcome to the Project TV31 Research and Development Team. Oh, thank you. In this short, informative video, you will be briefed on the required protocol in regard to Project KV-31, as well as receive an overview of future development plans. Well, I'm more out of the way. No, I'm kind what of covering... What is Project KV-31? Stay down here. Project KV-31 pertains to the study and development of the Async Low Proximity Magnetic Distortion System. Uh, okay, cool. Low proximity magnetic distortion system. For the sake of convenience, you may hear your peers refer to the project under any of the, the machine, following the door, titles. The back rooms, the complex. The machine, the door, the back rooms, the complex, hallways. Unauthorized usage of these terms outside of the async research facility is strictly prohibited. The threshold without guided supervision. Never enter the complex alone. All expeditions are to be comprised of no fewer than three individuals. Who's Reagan? You, 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 former U.S. President Ronald Reagan. That's who we're talking about. Everyone's saying, who's Reagan? Former U.S. President Ronald Reagan.
Yeah, but that was two weeks ago. I'm not going to be doing anything about it now. I mean, do you really think that there's actually a vaccine in this situation? I wish I could hear them. Like, I really wish I could. I mean, there's too many variables. Because you want to do this. You need to set the whole circuit. It's doable. You know how they say that I'm going north? Um... Guys, do you hear this? Interesting. Hey guys, can you hear this? Hey! What the fuck? Guys. Um. Guys. George. Morgan! What the fuck? Hey! Someone said it feels like when you lose your mom at Home Depot. I feel that. I've, oh, it's a completely black down there. Who's this one? Oh, he's lost. Oh, they just traped the wire not to get lost. I would assume, but obviously he wasn't the one with the wire. What is this? Is he seating or something? Fuck. What the fuck is this? Is that the fucking goo that killed the last guy? <sighs> fucking FNAF ambience again. <coughs> Did he get mushroomed? Wait, is he the guy that died to the fucking shrooms and not the our guy we saw at the start? So I originally I thought the dead guy would be the guy from the first video, but it might be this guy. Goopy, thank you the prime, appreciate it. Oh, interesting. Five months. Oh, why is the ceiling here so low? Oh, it's like, it's like traipsing in. That's interesting. It's like slanted. Okay. Weird. Okay, but there is something in there. It's not just like a void, because turn the light on. It looks like fucking Tomb Raider. Literally looks like Lara Croft. Oh, they went in too. Oh, okay, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's like painted with trees. Oh, interesting. God, that ice pack got warm quick. Jesus. Did not. in the right order? I have no idea. I'm just watching it from the playlist on the channel. The wooden carts. like snoring oh okay back out into the, the corridors you can tell it's not real by how everything looks <laughs> you can see it's different because of how it looks
<laughs> that is my favorite comment of today. That's that's good. That's a good one. That's a really, really good one. I like that one. Also, uh, Lemon Insecurities and Fentech. Thank you so much for the primes. Oh, uh, sorry. Tier one for Fentech. Appreciate it. 15 months and going strong. If you have primes, you're evil for not using them. You're evil. Like Scott's Major. That's what I'm going to say. If you don't use your prime on me, you're evil. You got it sat there. You click subscribe. You got a prime sat there. You're not even using it. And you're not even using it on me. I could use that. I could use that money. You you can't. You can't have it. But I can. You're not gonna use it. Kind of evil. Just gonna say that. Jack isn't real. He's just CGI. Some people would believe that. I reckon that's a conspiracy we could start. I, I feel like some people believe that. So my face does that sometimes. Like there's like weird pictures of me pulling weird faces because like it's animation errors. So my face just does that sometimes. Oh, weird. Oh, these are like the research rooms. But how do they get people in? Hello? How do they get people in here in the first place if the threshold wasn't made until like six? Yeah, this clearly existed prior to the threshold. Or I think, unless it didn't? Or it might not actually. No, chron mm, chronologically might not have done. Ooh, fucking art scared me. Kevin Backroom's Christian was considered a breach, I'm telling you all. Maybe, maybe he did get infected with that goo. Backroom's motion detected. How much more is there? Oh, no, there's only four more videos. Oh, they're quite short. Okay, interesting. Cat buys, thank you for tier one. Bad time. Anyway, 14 no, perfect time, perfect time, perfect time. Park. March 5th, 1990. So this is... Right, right as the threshold was made. No, it's like a couple... It's like... Right after, yeah, it's right after the threshold was made. Yeah, they're they're just they're just building the research little facility thing. This is still actively going, by the way. There, there, there was a video made. The, the last video was uploaded two weeks ago. Sick song though. Yeah, the music's kind of cool. It's got like some good fucking vibes to it. Uh, some modified video cameras are optimally positioned along lateral division A. Each camera has been modified to send out an alert and begin recording when motion or substantial noise is detected. Cool. That's interesting. Okay, interesting. That isn't the layout, though. The grid isn't quite like that, is it? I feel like some of this has to be real, not all of this stuff. I feel like some of it's real, you know? I think they mix real and animated together, clearly, yeah. The following is a compilation of all detected motion alerts received during the night of Monday, March 5th. Motion detected. Three research, researchers press Central Division of the D. Fair enough. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, that's... That wasn't three. That was two. Oh, there's the third. Okay. Perfect. Fine. Normal. Makes sense. I mean, not normal. They're in the back rooms, but I mean, it makes sense for the context. Returning researchers past Central Division D. Great, perfect. Supervisor passes camera six. Nope. 
Noise detected. Threshold barrier closed. Oh, so you can open and close the threshold. Yeah, fair enough. This is all fine. Noise detected. To be determined. Oh, here we go. Here's the first. Okay, that's the creature. That's a, that's what that's the weird creature that like killed our guy. Microphone failure. Not necessarily anything ominous. Cameras break. Oh, yeah, no, that's something moving back there. And leaving. Okay. Yep, no, I saw it. You didn't have to. <laughs> the big YouTube red circle was not needed. I saw that shit. What is it, though? Image upscaled in the hand. It's like a big hand or something. What is it? Weird. The red circle. The clickbait circle. The clickbait circle. Please click on this. Backroom's prototype. Prototype what? Looks like a dead body. What the hell? I mean, that's... Did that super... Wait. Did that supervisor ever make it back? No, no, no. He got... He got... It was in, like, that research room. And then he got, like, fucking dead. He was in that research room and then it, the alarms came on. Maybe he got killed. Then he got fucking dead. A man of words. I'm a, yeah, a man of words is a good way to play. Not wise words, not, not eloquent ones, just a man of words. I would describe myself as that, yeah. I, was, I swear I just fucking heard R2-D2 here. Oh, this is the first ever threshold prototype, I guess. Wilma, thank you for tier one. Or gift to tier one, sorry. Okay, so that's the first ever pro uh, threshold prototype, I guess. There's a secret video in the description of the last video. Okay, we'll go back to that and pull it up after this one. Is that it? Okay, cool. Let's go back to motion detected. No, it's just Patreon. I, I haven't read any of the descriptions, to be fair. Let's just... Um... We watched that one. That's in the playlist, so don't worry. Didn't notice that was unlisted. Nope. Oh, we didn't look at this one. I'm Ted Koppel. There has been... We, ah, that one wasn't in the playlist, I don't think. That wasn't, okay, interesting, we didn't, we didn't see this. a rather strong earthquake in Northern California, so strong, in fact, that it has, among other things, knocked out all the power, among... uh, or much of the power at Candlestick Park, where the third game of the World Series was being played. But in the overall scheme of things, that may be the very least of things that has happened today. You can see some video there. I gather that's live video of Candlestick Park. And we, we are feeling a shock right now. And that shaking in your picture is being amplified by the pot, uh, tremor three. that has just gone through the top of the stadium. And we are live. They're yeah, taking the, the 14 off. months. Uh, 8.41 Eastern, 5.41. And we just felt it out here. We are at ground level. This is a live shot from our affiliate, our owned and operated station in San Francisco, KGO. And you can see that there are at least 
two major fires that seem to be in progress there. Let me just explain to you that uh, what we're doing here is we are listening in on the broadcast of our affiliate in San Francisco, KGO, because a great deal of the information that is coming is more readily accessible to them than it is to us. Uh, and they have reporters reporting live from around the entire Bay Area region. Whenever they can to stop the fire, but part of the problem, obviously, is, uh, is gas. Prepare for aftershock. Prepare for three days of no services. You got 90 minutes of light left. You better make use of your time. Stand here, ain't doing nothing. We have Leslie Brinkley standing by live right now. Leslie, go ahead. What? I don't get the relevance of this. I'm not getting the relevance of this yet so the portal creation caused this is that what it's trying to imply what, what was the date did it give a date Ted Koppel there has been a rather strict that it has among other things a series of things that has happened the city is out in much of the city and we have a bad free it's looking bad over here in Oakland the electricity is out in much of the city and we have a it's looking we have Leslie Brinkley standing by live right now Leslie go ahead it's looking bad over here in Oakland. The electricity is out in much of the city, and we have a bad freeway collapse. It's that ramp of the Nimitz Freeway that goes from Cypress, Cypress Street on up to the Bay Bridge. About a six or seven block stretch of it collapsed during the earthquake. They are pulling bodies out from underneath Jesus. this lower ramp. There were just some injuries on the upper ramp, but those on the lower ramp, there are a lot of fatalities. The epicenter of this earthquake is about 100 miles to the south in the Santa Cruz Mountains along the San Andreas Fault. We have had very difficult time getting any information out of that area tonight. Now our own Tony Russomano is live in Santa Cruz now to give us uh, some notion of what's happened. This is our first report from him. Tony? Pete, this town of 40,000 is about uh, 10 miles from the epicenter of the earthquake. You would expect the damage to be severe here, and it is. The downtown section of Santa Cruz is basically gone. All the old uh, brick, unreinforced buildings have collapsed. This is a department store called Ford's. It collapsed. The second store, the second story came down to the, into the first floor, trapping several people inside. At least three people are known to have died here on the mall. Perhaps Jesus. 12 to 14 total in Santa Cruz. Authorities do not have a, a final fatality figure. Many, many other people are injured. Power has been out for several hours. Date in the description that isn't actually. There's nothing. It's weird how this wasn't added to the playlist though. See, that's actually a real video. The only thing about this is that's real news reports, right? That's kind of sad. Okay. Oh, yeah, so these all have dates. The first one is 1996, right? And when was the first contact done? Uh, so the second project was done in 89. The third test was done in 88, which I believe is when you get the spike of missing persons cases. This was recorded in 1990. Which isn't, uh, so that obviously, oh no, that's, that's present. That's the present day, I would, yeah, no, it can't be. What? Unless it is. Because when was the, uh, first contact done? 13 months, let's. No, that, that is, that blue line is the moment. I guess it's just projected, isn't it? So this is only about here. I'm just trying to work this out now. Autopsy report is 1990, so it's not the first guy. The autopsy report is not the first guy. This guy is not that first guy, because this is six years afterwards. He falls through six years after the fact. So it can't be. This was compiled in 91. So at this point, they've got all the research facilities and whatnot, and they're setting them up in the back rooms. Interesting. The autopsy report was done in 1990. Two days later. So I guess he didn't kill them, and they found him days later. He just started decaying in the... But he wasn't decaying here. That's what I find interesting. Two days later, and he was decaying. Oh, wait, unless it's month and year? Yeah, it's only two... It's two days later. 
Okay. So I assume. But it can't be this guy because this was this was like 20 days after that. So this is after the autopsy report. This guy finds the fungus. So it's not him either. So who's the dead guy? I guess he's just some stranger. We don't know who he is. It's March 5th, 1990. This is the cameras. The prototype was in... This is the first prototype in 82. So this chronologically would be the first video. Yeah. And there's pitfalls. That's in 1990. Is there anything like pinned comments? Anything like that? Just want to check. There is a pinned comment on this one. That's just to the playlist. Okay. That's what we're watching anyway. So it doesn't make a difference. Uh, is that just also going to be the playlist? Assuming they're all the playlists. Okay. Looks like pin comments just link to the playlist. Looks like we're on pitfalls. Okay. How many videos are there? There's two more. Two more videos. This one is... Chronologically the most recent. So far, we've watched. May 6th. Yeah, I suppose yeah, the, I, it could be one of the missing people, the guy that they found. He is in the missing people video, so it does make sense. We, we just a week. <laughs> Nobody's coming. Yeah, I think we'll leave it like that. Yeah, I'm gonna try to call him from a bridge or um, Yeah, it's difficult to people down here. You know, look at my timetable. Check one, two, three. One, two, three. Mark, mic check. You're all good. This is Marv. One, two, three. Marv, mic check. One, two, three. Great. There's the subtitles. There's not. Why is it never subtitles? Uh, this is George. Mike. Oh, the video actually is in 4K minimum. It's crazy. Okay, into the threshold. Pitfalls. This is the longest video in the series. Oh, okay, so now the threshold goes straight into the research room. Which is interesting. Is that where you... So in this video... In this video, does he run through? Um... The async search for... No, so this is this is February 1990, and it doesn't go straight into the research room. But yet, when he runs about, oh yeah, there's that weird time thing. So does he get forwarded into time? Because then there's this research room that he doesn't recognize, and that looks like the door to the threshold. So I guess he gets shot forward into time. Why is everyone saying goggy? Why is everyone now saying goggy? Oh, wait, wait, was the guy's name George? Is that literally it? But now they go straight through into the research room. Interesting. Okay. Has the vertical expansion been approved yet? They're not getting to that until after the presentation. When does that go to? Sorry, can you repeat? What day will the tour be over? Uh, from the 7th to the 10th. The next report out? Uh, yeah, it should be good. Alright, and the 
Tomorrow, Ali, thank you for the tier one. Okay, so I guess they're going further into the back rooms than before. Since there's like tape laid down up to there, so I guess that's already been explored, but they're, now they're laying down cable to find their way back. The back rooms, indeed. Welcome. Why they wear hazmat suits? What do they? Th are, are they just not tested the air? So from what we can tell, it's fine, right? Oh, unless oh that weird fungus thing, maybe. Oh, wow. Oh, Good interesting. Thing. Oh, this is the pitfalls then. Which is obviously the the first guy fell down into one of the pitfalls. Is that all? Visibility falls off pretty quick. Might be at an angle. And we've got a door. Don't recognize the design. We need to cover all the way over there. Assembling the walker would be redundant. Sunshine Stereo, thank you for the prime. I can't really hear them, it's very frustrating. Yeah. So I'm like trying to work out what they're saying in case it's important, but like there's no subtitles and they're very muffled. Alright, I'll take a look. Go notify cloud. Easy. This is where you can see it's like clearly like, I think these guys are green screened in. Cause like his feet don't line up with the floor. It's not the first time I've noticed that. I think the f the rooms are CG and the people are real and they're green screened in. Cause that's why he kind of like walks out. Or maybe he's CG at this point. It's very hard to say. And I think that is CG. The the suit kind of did a weird thing. Oh my god! What do you see? Everything okay? Uh, Evan, get the camera over here. A across? Uh, okay, just hurry. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Oh, He's gonna fall okay. down one of the pits, it's isn't small. he? Well, I don't know what I'm doing, thank you for the prime. Oh, it's really well done. I'm not taking the piss just because the suit did a weird thing. Like, you know, the fucking, as much as I love the Mandela catalog, some of the editing's very poor. Like, the sort of like, the, the you know, this, the three had some decent CG and stuff, but like, in the past, it was just like weird Photoshop stuff. Still love the series, you know? It means the guy doesn't know too much yeah, about I'm, the technology. I'm going. Still a creative idea. Walking on normal ground. Even there. Oh, what was that? Oh, there was something on the screen. There was text, there was text, there was text. Saw text. Skipping over. I saw text flash up. Flash, 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 flash. While... I'm just putting this in Photoshop, that's too hard. Hold on. Whee! Beep! Let's just whack it into Photoshop. Okay. Uh, 
horizontal. Whilst while, while data could be infirmed from the, these readings, nobody knew what... Let's just stretch it out there. While data could be inferred from these readings, nobody knew what would actually be found on the other side. Oh, so so basically they 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 they, they kind of had an idea, but they they were still shocked, I guess. Just eerie message. Cool. Uh, I think I pulled something in my shoulder. I'm a, I'm a bit dizzy, but no, no, I'm fine. Where are you? Can you describe your surroundings? I was even thinking of the prime. It's different. Hey, no months, yeah, appreciate like it. Is this a bad there, time? Architect I mean, it's maybe a bad time to mention babies, but you know. Pictures the same, but the wallpaper is different. It's a bit greener. Okay, wait, describe that again. But the wallpaper, it's different. Where are you? Can you describe your surroundings? Uh, it's it's different, it, like like a room up there. But architecture's the same, but the wallpaper is different. It's a bit greener. Hold on, I need to see if. Oh, it's like a little crack where you can see no. shit. I'm not reaching the tunnel I fell from. The opening comes out through the wall, but it's too high. Okay, just stand by and stay for a Got it. How do you not get a concussion? Pure fucking luck, I would guess. Seems to be fine. I'm recording, but who knows what the output will be like. Mark, make your way back over to this side. Carefully. Do we have another camera? I need to get this. It has to wait. This takes precedence. Alpha, like, thank you for the prime. Appreciate it. Hope you have a Slow wonderful night, old man, wind. less than three. I'm having a good time. I'm having a great time. Wonderful time. Attach. I can use it to climb up. Just, Just throw down the guideline with the weight attached. I can use it to climb up. Five months Just tried that. There won't be enough length to reach you. George, go back to standard and bring it together. Hang in there, Marv. What was that? What was what? I don't, I don't know. Sounded like I think there's somebody down here. What? Uh, I, I hear yelling. Like a person is yelling. What? A, a person? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That Interesting voice work there. It goes from being like a person is yelling, like a bit stressed and terrified, to yeah. There's a person yelling. Wait, a person? Yeah. Sense, are you sure you're not just hearing us? No, it's definitely not from you. Why would you go down there now, though? Weird, twisty corridor. It's June. Blitz a legend. It means it's illegal to be straight. Anyone caught not being a gay will be immediately reported to the FBI. Not sure that's true. Not sure that's true. Otherwise, sadly, I'm in bother. You know. Please don't tell me this is true. Why is he doing this? Bro, he's peeping the horror. Don't peep the horror, Marv. Someone will die. I know it'll be hilarious, but someone will die. Oh, interesting. Are those street lights? Street lights. Huh, interesting. The left hallway, and it's right there, under the gap in the wall. You need to stay at the hole. George will be back any minute, then we can assess the situation from there. Is that actually what if Miller's goal? right about the null zones? Even if that's the case, I agree with Mark. It's not worth the risk. Nothing is worth the risk. Nothing is worth the risk. Oh my god. Marvin? Marvin, do you copy? Hello? 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 Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Marv, what are you doing? I'm trying to find them. I know how to get back. It's, it's fine. 
keep us posted. He's whispering too quietly, I can't yeah. fucking hear him. No, nah, not the horror, he's peeping it, he's peeping it! I feel like he's gonna die now. You should have stuck near the hole, had a rope come down and get him. Instead, he concerned about other people. This is my advice, chat. Never concern about other people. You hear the cries of others, don't follow them. You might die. Always look out for number one. Sigma grind set rule two. I'm joking. You should always look out for others. Or maybe I'm not. Can you hear me? I'm hit. I'm hit. Anything. 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 Oh, interesting. It's not like an actual house. It goes okay. further. Okay. This is odd. Uh, there are inverted turn signs in this room coming out of the carpet. They're inverted? Okay. Silly uh, decor. This guy's got a crazy house. Go 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 goofy house. Oriented property. This guy's crazy. He's just following screams. Just following fucking screams into like a weird. The back rooms are already weird, right? Like these infinite corridors. And then he goes into this place and he's like, this is unnatural. I'm all by myself and could die here, but I'm going to go investigate it. It's like, if you know the way, if you fucking know the way, leave, right? Guy's screaming. This is what I do. I, they throw the rope down, I climb back up, I go to my team, hey, while I was back there, I saw a different geometry to what we've experienced previously. I think we should investigate this further. Fucking leave and go investigate it properly! Goofy house. Goofy fucking house. Goofy fucking house, don't, don't. He's losing fucking radio signal and he's still going. Come on. Moron, moron, moron. What was that flash? What was that flash, moron? Losing you, just stamp it in. Does anything happen or is it just flash? Just flash it. Okay. Bro, I'm gonna slap this man. Hey, me too. Idiots in horror. Literally idiots in horror. You're a fucking moron. Literally go back, communicate with your team, then head down here if you're really curious. Because I agree, if you're investigating this place, then it is, th this is like your job, right? Your job is to investigate this place. So I get being curious about new geometry and stuff. Hey, you might get a raise, man. You're gonna get the fucking raise if you do it pro properly and don't put yourself in danger. If you die, you can't get your raise, moron. Repeat, Marvin, do you copy? This is Marv? Okay. Good, what is that? Like a backpack? A sleeping bag? Oh my god. And a yeah. chair. I think someone's been living down here. Living down there? That's not possible. Hey! I got bullied Can by you? James. The thing is, they're not responding to his. on you for so long earlier, so you better appreciate this. Jokes. Happy to have supported you for so James long. Marriott doesn't know who he's laughing at. You know he's a Tory. You know he wore that tux and, and was a Tory, right? If anyone gets laughed at, it's him. James Marriott is pathetic. I do not deserve laughing at ever. He had, his, he had me painted on his nails. Fan behavior. Never let him bully you for being a true manifold. If you use your, so, if you use your prime on James Marriott, that's what I'm concerned with. You hear me? Like, it's not responding to you. Like, it's crying out for help, but it's not responding to you. So it's probably not an actual human actually wanting help. So why the fuck are you assuming it's safe? Like, this is what I don't get. It's obviously mimicking. Obviously mimicking. Because it's not responding. 
Just repeating. So you go, oh, I, I'm gonna sit here repeating myself if I keep complaining. Sorry, can you repeat that? Marvin. That's a creature. Person. What is that? Oh, that is fuck. not a fucking person. It's fucking quick, whatever it is. Oh, he fell over, Muppet. What a moron. Now nah, you're done, mate, because he fell over, didn't you? Keep running, Marv. Go on, you can outpace him, Marv. You can outpace him, Marv. Go on, just throw yourself over in the dolphin dive, Black Ops 2 style. Why would it not already be down there? Why would they not already pre-fucking dangled it for when he got there? Oh my god, I'm pissed. <laughs> He's dead now. He's dead because that creature's gangling. Got to go. He's fucked. He's fucked. He's fucked. He's fucked. He I'm gonna get jump scared because of his idiocy. Oh. <laughs> right, climb back up, then moron. <laughs> oh, what? Wait, it ended. Is that it? Is that actually it? Oh, it just ends there. What the fuck? Okay, so at that point in 1990, they discover the, that creature. Assuming it's the same one and not like a, you know. And it can mimic people. And then this is... The exact same day. It's the exact same person. That is not a fucking person! Odd. You should watch the Mandela catalog, that's how the stream started. So is that all of them? Or is that them going no, that's them returning, right? Or is that them going in? Oh, sorry. Nose. Those are like actual fucking actors at this point. Wild. Chad face. Yeah, he's like... Wild, this is really cool. That's like some Monsters Inc. They're, they're like the Monsters Inc. Like people who like when that guy gets a sock on him, like show up. That's what the guys in the hazmat suits look like. That's the vibes they're giving me. This is cool though, that they've got like actual actors and like sets and shit now.
Uh, okay, so he's watching it back. Oh, yeah. Wilma, thank you for another gifted sub. That's when the creature shows up. Yeah, he looks a bit scared. I would be. That's, that, that was me watching this. That was me in the live Jack reaction. Oh, that was his face. He like, kind of scared me for a second. Why is this man watching it in the dark? Yeah, I don't know why he's doing that either. Like, I'm doing it for content. This guy's doing it for research. You can watch it in the light when you're not going to be as scared, man. Ooh, cinematography. Yeah, it's really well shot. I'm very impressed by this. Sorry, you know what it was? I just realized I sniffed my finger like a weirdo. I, like... No, I, you know what? I'm not even going to bother explaining. I didn't scratch my asshole. Right, let's just put it there. It isn't that weird. No, don't, 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 don't clip it. Don't clip it. Don't clip it. Because then I'm going to be like fucking Wings of Justice. I mean, Wings of Redemption. Everyone's going to think I'm like Wings of Redemption. All the fucking finger sniff compilations. You know what it was, genuinely? I, I, you know, at, at the Amaranth event, I like scoffed up my elbows. They're big scabs, but they, one of them fell off today. And now this one fell off. And it literally just fell off while we were live. And I didn't want to pay attention to it because it's kind of gross. But like scabs fall off, man. But then as it, <laughs> as it fell off, I smelled a smell, a gross little smell. I'm like, is that my elbow? So I give it a sniff to check if it's my elbow. Because if it smells like that, it's like, like, is it infected? Why does it smell like that? So it wasn't me like sniffing my ass or anything weird. It was me making sure my scab wasn't fucking infected. Which I realize is weird, but I didn't mean to do it. All right, it was just a subconscious, like, I probably should check if that's where the smell's coming from, because that's gross. Was it your elbow? I don't know, because I didn't, I didn't get all the way to sniffing it, because then I realized I was on camera and went, oh, don't do that. So I don't know. I don't think it is. I just got a weird smell for a second. I'm sorry. It was gross. My scab is falling off as we speak, and it's gross. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that, because I realize it's gross, but I can't help it. Scabs fall off, man. It's natural. But I wanted to make sure it wasn't infected and gross. And the best way is a sniff, because I can't see it, I can't visually see it. And I can't bring it up to the camera to ask you guys, because Twitch will ban me. So I'm sorry! So I'm sorry that I did that, but at the end of the day, it's for the good of my health! So make sure I'm not dying of an infection. Man. You guys have been mean to me in a way that I don't appreciate. We wouldn't have noticed. Yeah, no, I think someone would have done. Someone would have clipped it. I could have said nothing, and yeah, less people would have noticed, but someone would have done that. Clip would be out there without an explanation, which is more bothering, bothersome to me. Because then I'd be like, Wings of Redemption, like... Where he like does the, he like he like scratches his nose, but everyone calls it finger sniff compilation. It's just like him going like, look, listen, look at the description. We will, we will, we will. Don't worry. Can we get back to the video, please? Yes, we can actually. So, the, do they just close it off? Huh, interesting. Yeah, I guess they are just closing it off. And it makes sense. That's a fucking dangerous creature. But then how does it get out then? Unless they didn't... S unless they aren't sealing it out, they're sealing it in. Like, unless it did manage to get up. Because the researchers came back. 
Microprocessor. They said microplastics. I'm like, no, it's the microplastics. It's not a, it's not a disease. It's the microplastics. Block off a creature with plywood. Yeah, look. It's not going to like bust its way through, is it? It's going to assume that's a wall and just be like, oh, I'm off. Sealing it in, yes, on purpose. Obviously, they're going to be trying to seal it in, but what if they haven't? What if they've accidentally sealed it? Like, you know. Or is that what they're opting for? Not sealing it off, but like creating something so they can if they need to. Just shoot it. Okay, American. Um, fuck. I think that's it. I think we watched the whole of the back rooms. All right. Then I would say. Did, did the film theory do, do a video on it? They did. Hmm. I said we watched the film theory. Who's down for watching the film theory? Isn't the credit like 16? No way. No way, no way, no way. All right, fuck it. Let's give it a watch. Go on then, Marky Moo. Mark, what? Hello. Map hat is Matthew. Matthew, you. Go on then, Matthew, you. I don't, know, I don't know where that came from. Mark Pat. He's Mark Pat now. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Film Theory, a show that's coming to you live from the back rooms. No, it's, live, it's obviously not, though, no is it? idea how to get out of here. Internet speed's good, though, and the moist carpet water is, uh... It's not the best I've ever had, but, you know, it'll do. Wait, what was that noise? For all of you who are uninitiated, the monotone misery that is the back rooms began back in 2019 when this image was... I remember that image. Like, I do remember that image being, like, viral. Posted to a 4chan board dedicated to unsettling images. Just an ugly series of rooms, right? No big deal. Well, it came packaged with the following text. Quote, if you're not careful and you no clip out of reality in the wrong areas, you'll end up in the back rooms, where it's nothing but the stink of old, moist carpet, the madness of mono yellow, the endless background noise of fluorescent lights at maximum hum buzz, and approximately 600 million square miles of random randomly segmented empty rooms to be trapped in. God save you if you hear something wandering around nearby, because it sure heard you. This post immediately- It's- it's- it, it's such a simple basis. Oh, this guy just saw a weird image and went, what if I give it a creepy backstory for the lols? And then it fucking takes off like this, it's wild. Got under people's I love it. I, I love how such simple ideas can inspire such- Big ones. Series of mild annoyances that make you feel squicky and uncomfortable. Slightly wet socks, a faint electric buzz, harsh lighting, ugly wallpaper. In short, it is mundane horror. An oppressive monotony that slowly wears you down, mentally and physically. That miserable setting inspired lots of online artists to write their own independent creepypastas. Even creating a short video game where you explore the space. But here in 20... Oh yeah, I want to play the game as well. We should play the game. 22, the back rooms has suddenly exploded in popularity thanks to a new series by VFX artist Kane Pixels, who's taken the basic concept and started to build a full-on world around it. And you know what that means. Lore! Kane's first Backroom <laughs> short film nice. takes place in, uh, well, <laughs> already we hit a bit of a snag. The slate says July 4th, 1990-something, but the description of the video actually has September 23rd, 1996. Anyway, this is probably just because it was the first video in the series. Dates become much clearer as the world gets more and more developed. Things start off instantly when a cameraman, fittingly enough named Kane, tries to set up a wide shot and immediately falls through the ground. Literally no clipping through reality, only to wind up in the dank and deserted world full of humming fluorescent lights, retro carpeting, yellow walls, endless corridors, and monsters that, at least at first glance, remind me of walking tripods. Our cameraman wanders mm, around trying that to is kind of escape. Like. Along the way, he finds some interesting landmarks hidden amongst the endless walls, but ultimately he's caught and presumably killed by the weird fungi monster it's short it oh it is oh it's the fungus it's the fungus Th fucking rick ross rick ross famously said beware the fungus and then he made purple lamborghini with skrillex and the joker but before he met the joker on a boat uh jared leto's joker as well so you know the most based um he he said beware the fungus i actually uh, i think i have that written down somewhere i have i have the quote i have it 
somewhere. Hold on. Ross, beware the fungus. Yeah, look, here it is. I mean, here's one, just one of them, you know? Rick Ross. Rick Ross. Wait, give it a second. Rick Ross reminds everyone to stay at home to avoid the fungus. Which I've now found out isn't some just obscure meme and they just picked Rick Ross to uh, be like the, the character for it. Because he's the Pears guy from Vine, if you didn't know as well. Um, actually, turns out that was what he called the coronavirus. Um... He called the coronavirus the fungus, like the great fucking fungus that was killing everyone. Fucking Rick Ross is like, beware the f the great fungus. I didn't realize it was COVID. I just thought it was like a meme. I thought people were just lying. This is this mass lie that Rick Ross was like really paranoid about this like fungus and it was just like a meme. Turns out it was real and it was COVID. <laughs> He's fucking mental. Oh, and then he made a song with Skrillex and the Joker as well. It's simple. Oh, my mic arm squeaked a bit and it sounded like a little childish giggle and it scared the fuck out of me. Since the massive success of that first Backrooms video, Kane has been busy expanding the world with 13 mil, I had no idea. Test, first contact and missing persons, as well as making the accompanying collateral.mov and March 11th, 1990 archive.tar, which are both hidden in the descriptions of the various videos. From all of them, we ultimately learned that the Backrooms was an experiment designed by a company named Async to solve space issues, providing near limitless room. I didn't get the idea they made the Backrooms though. I got the idea that they found them and, dis and were like, like, how do we purposefully get here? You know? Both storage and housing in an ever- I we made a backroom game video. Yeah, I do want to play it. I might play it. World. Where it all went wrong, though, remains to be seen. But what I want to focus on today isn't the where and the why, but rather the how. how Go back to the la last video and description. Oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't. Uh, let's just have a look at the description of report. Oh, there is a link. Oh, there's an enlisted video. Shit. Well, okay, before we get into the game theory, there's an enlisted video. 30 seconds long that we missed. Oh, that car clips in the fucking back rooms, isn't it? Fucking hell. Just clipped. That's it. Nothing really lore-wise. Is there a date? There isn't even a date. But yeah, fuck. Just unsettling, I guess. Anyway, interesting. Survive. In the fourth video of the main series, we see that since accessing the back rooms in 1989, missing persons reports have been skyrocketing as more and more people fall out of reality never to return. So if that were you, what do you do? How do you navigate a seemingly endless- That could be how objects get there. I mean, it would kind of make sense. Maze with limited resources long enough to potentially figure out this mysterious world. How do you avoid an unknown monster that roams the halls? What mistakes do we see? Kane How do you turn on no clip, clip IRL? Press V on the keyboard. Not the keyboard in life, though. The keyboard that's control. You, you know, like the the keyboard. Press V. Exploration of the back rooms, and what could we do better? Pay attention, friends, because today I have the definitive list of six tactics that might just save your life the next time you no clip out of reality into an ugly yellow nightmare. In collateral.mov, we learned that in 1989, tests by the Async Foundation caused a massive earthquake that took place in the Santa Cruz Mountains. So, yes. is the facility in the mountains? Are you at the top of a mountain and need to go down? Are you under the mountain and you need to go up? Are you in the upside down and you need to get un upside downed? It's unclear at best. All we know is that in one moment we were filming with friends and in the next we're here. So once you land in the back rooms I I, That would be my face. My face when? My face when? My face when I fall in the back rooms. Hold on. That would be my face. That would that would be my face IRL. That would be my face if, if I fell into the back rooms IRL I think. That would be how it looked. First thing that you need to do is take the advice of the U.S. Forest Service, which suggests that when you get lost in the woods, and I w that would be my face if a bear spoke to me as well. This is so relatable. I love this video. Cave, you do not move at all unless you have a specific reason to take a step. Basically, you sit down, you don't panic, you assess the situation and the tools that you have at your disposal, and you stay where you are. You ended up at this location for a reason. Maybe this is an entry point for other people. SV cheats enabled. Yeah. <laughs> Someone else will no clip in. 
Maybe people will wind up looking for you, and by moving, you throw off their tracking. In short, by panicking, running, and moving forward without a clear plan of attack, you're only succeeding in getting yourself more and more lost. Eventually, though, you will need to move. And this was Kane's first mistake. He had no plan. He just wandered aimlessly and headed towards whatever looked interesting. This meant that, when he started getting chased by the back rooms' as monster, he had no idea of his surroundings and wound up meeting a dead end. Figuratively. Or, I, I guess it would be literal. Huh. Anyway, proper grammar aside, Bezos we're in a repetitive money maze. Thank you for the prime, man. Appreciate it. Bezos money is my Free favorite kind. And we need a way to track our movements. And for that, we need to use a maze-solving algorithm. An automated, strategic way for solving the maze with no prior knowledge of it. Our first strategy should be... Dystrix, was he called? Dystrix? This is a computer science thing. I used to know how to code one of these, but I forgot. Is it Dystrix? Some people will know what I'm talking about. Using the wall follower technique, also known as the right hand. Oh no, that, that there's about the right hand rule. Dystrix. How do you? No. I'm saying it wrong. Uh, pathfinding algorithm. Literally, it's the pathfinding algorithm. It's got a name. Uh, I found it. Found the original. What's his name? What's the What's the fella's name? I'm reading about it now. How do you say it? Dykstra's. Dykstra's. That's it. I'm saying it wrong. Dykstra's. Dykstra's algorithm. That's his name. And basically, it's like a pathfinding algorithm to find the shortest method to get between point A and point B. But you need a lot of information. You probably couldn't use it in the back rooms because you need a lot of information about them. So there's no real way of actually, you know. And rule. This is one that I think a lot of people have heard of, but maybe don't understand the actual mechanics of. Basically, it's a tried and true maze escaping method that involves running your right hand along a wall while you navigate the maze. You see, mazes, in their simplest terms, are just shapes that you're trapped inside. So you, as the maze solver, need to find the outermost wall and the hole that's presumably in it. Many mazes are what's known as simply connected, i.e. all the walls are connected together to the maze's outer boundary. As such, if you were to unwind the maze, it basically amounts to one big circle with an entrance hole and an exit hole. So by keeping your hand locked to one wall and following it all the way through, you follow the outline of that circular path and you either find the exit, oh, congratulations, wow. you survive, or you wind up looping back to where you first started. Well, that's certainly not ideal. It is helpful because it tells us that the maze isn't simply constructed, but rather it's what's known as a disjoint maze, one where the walls aren't always connected to the outer boundary. Huh, you know, I didn't know about this. I've never, I've heard about the right hand rule, but I've never actually contact, practiced it. We actually get confirmation that this is what we're dealing with with the back rooms. We see a map that confirms that the back rooms is a disjoint maze. Notice that there are multiple chunks of wall here that don't seem to connect to the outside line. Interesting. But just because we're in a more complicated maze doesn't mean that we're out of options. First and foremost, if Kane was able to bring his camera with him into the back rooms, then his other belongings have no clipped with him as well. Specifically, things on his body like keys and clothes. And this immediately puts us at a huge advantage. If you have something like keys or a belt, you should immediately mark your starting location on the wall and then run those keys or belts or whatever against the wall to leave indentations or markings. You can scuff the walls with your shoes. You can peel the wallpaper. You can pull a Hansel and Gretel and rip pieces of your clothing off to use as breadcrumbs. You can write arrows and notes to yourself on the walls, which we know can be done since there are markings throughout the maze left by mm. other people. Tearing the wallpaper seems your best bet, I would say. This way, when our right-hand method results in us doubling back to where we began, we have a clear indication of which walls we followed and which ones we didn't. And if the walls do happen to be somehow supernatural and can't be marked by you, then the ceiling tiles are another option here. You see, the ceilings of the back rooms appear to be a specific type known as a drop ceiling, or suspended ceiling, which is common in office environments where lightweight foam panels hang a few inches below the main structural ceiling, hiding things like wires and support beams. By throwing mm -hmm. a shoe to break- I know that because of the Tommy video where we wrecked an office. I've never seen the inside of an office roof before, and then we did because we fucking threw things up there. I was just throwing shit up, you know?
cool. or knock down tiles, you're able to mark your progress in all the areas that you've been. Wouldn't the monster here? That is an interesting point, though. Bit by bit, you eliminate the hallways that you've tracked and systematically work your way to the outer edges of the maze. One other strategy to help with this in a disjoint maze setup like the back rooms is the pledge algorithm. Here, you travel in a set direction. Let's say you walk forward until you hit an obstacle. From there, you put your right hand on the wall and you start walking around the obstacle, counting the angles that you're turning. Clockwise turns are positive, counterclockwise turns are negative. Once you start facing the original direction that you're meant to move again, and the sum of your turns is zero, you leave the obstacle and you continue moving in your original direction. This ultimately gets you off the disjoints faster, leading you to the outer wall of the maze and eventually to the exit. Right now, all huh. the seasoned back That's cool. are probably laughing at me. Fucking insane. hell! Lord, who's that? Jesus Christ, oh fucking mighty. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Jesus fucking Christ almighty. I left my keys at Nikki's, so I asked her to drop them off, and then she said that she wanted to cook. So now she's... So, uh, she, so instead of just dropping off my keys, she's now cooking food in my kitchen. Which is fine, because it means I'll get some. But it does, however, mean that she scared the fucking life out of me. Um... Pat, the back rooms are an endless void of death and despair that'll cause you to slowly lose your mind. To which I say, jokes on you, I lost my mind years ago. I'm not gonna let him- Ha, Phonus have killed- uh, ruined his mind, not killed him. He's not dead. Though actually, he's in a bit of trouble at the minute over Phone Nuts Freddy's. I've not watched that video yet. Defeat me. Plus, not convinced that this thing is actually infinite or unpredictable. Like I said, in this new Kane Pixel series, we see a map of the place. We also see async employees able to walk through the back rooms using a long red line, presumably as a way to lead them back to the entrance door. So all of that is just trying our best to find an exit. But there's still one more important variable here that we have to consider. The monster that's looking to rip our body in half. My thing is... How do we how do we know you're gonna get out? Because we don't know for a fact that the um the threshold's open or like accessible at this point. So it's like it's all well and good trying to look for the threshold, but what if you can't get through it? So like, he's teaching us how to pathfind to leave for what purpose? Have to use as human nunchucks. And but this also is this, again, yeah. where a systematic approach to the maze will be our first line of defense. The last thing that we want is to wind up in a dead end. And the best thing that we can do to avoid that is to use the confusing layout to our advantage. Ideally, we're able to lead this monster to a disjoint, a section of the maze that we already know loops back around on itself. This gives us two simultaneous benefits. First and most importantly, we don't get lost while still allowing us to use the narrow hallways and looping structure to escape the sight lines of the monster. Instead of taking a straight path where the creature can easily track and follow us, you instead make tight turns in an effort to make yourself disappear behind a series of walls as quickly as possible. This sequence mm -hmm. of repeated doors that Kane has chased through provides an excellent example. By dodging and weaving instead of taking a straight path, he should be able to make himself disappear fairly quickly. The other benefit of using a big disjoint to escape this thing, though, is that we can then try to loop back around behind the monster to follow it. Obviously, your first priority is going to be avoiding this thing until you have a better sense of what it is and what it can do, but by leading it to a chunk of maze that you know will allow you to double back around it, you'll be able to sneakily gather information much more quickly. And who knows, these things presumably know the layout of the maze, so by following them, they may be able to provide another resource for finding the way out. I suppose you could try to fight it, or try to trap it with a rope, or drag it into a null zone, which you wouldn't even know about, but honestly, is confronting this thing actually gonna- I don't get the null zones yet. What? I didn't Help understand survive, the null zones. Probably not. Focus on escape and defense as your first priority. Once all that's settled, you've created- I wanted to explain the null zones. What were the null zones? I remember it being mentioned. It was like the, 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 the area that was marked off because there was a, a, like a- that was the only thing I think I didn't understand throughout the whole series. I think I gathered everything else pretty well. The system that actually works, you've learned that the walls don't magically change every 30 minutes. Start grabbing what- Ever you can find. In the back rooms video, Kane blatantly ignores a lot of potentially useful supplies. For instance, that ladder right there that's used to get into the crawl space, grab it and carry it around. Even better, try to use it to get into the ceiling grid. Remember what I said about suspended ceilings? That it hangs below what the real top of the room is? Well, often, walls only go as high as the dropped ceiling height. As such, once you're in the ceiling, you're not only hidden from the ground-based monsters, but you also have a wide open path to the outer edge of the maze, unobstructed by any walls. Mm. Heck, you might even be 
be able to find some electrical wires from the fluorescent lights that you can then follow, which again should presumably be leading you out of the facility. Mm. Also, if you come across That's some true. rope in a dumpster, you don't walk past it. You check out what's inside the dumpster and you take the rope. You take yeah. what the world gives you because you might not ever come across it again. The same goes for any chair legs that could be used for self-defense or heck, something inside of the filing cabinets that you walk past. Remember, you Yeah, no, he was kind of dumb, actually. Now he's putting all this out. Kind of stupid. Everything can have but I guess he was panicking and also didn't know he was in danger by this uses. point. For instance, when Kane's walking up the fire escape, his camera catches a glimpse of a hole in the ceiling that's created by an air duct. Air ducts, as you can probably guess, tend to lead to the outside of buildings. So again, having that ladder or rope might have helped him to investigate that. It's not a building, is it, Matthew? It, 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 it's like a fucking liminal space. I feel like the, the rules of real life don't necessarily apply in this instance. A cavern <coughs> section of the back room, those same <coughs> items could have helped him get across the chasm to the other side. If he had a ladder, he could have dropped down into the apartment area that we see here, allowing him to more efficiently look for food and water. Sure, nothing might come of any of these options, but again, it's more likely to work than just wandering around aimlessly surrounded by repetitive yellow wallpaper. Last, but certainly not least, don't take any one-way exits unless you absolutely have to. While running away from the monster, Kane ends up sprinting deep into the catacombs only to find a hole that he jumps down into. It was the right decision in the moment because he was being chased, but had he just found the hole, this would have left him vulnerable because it's a decision that he can't easily reverse. Again, document on the walls with your keys or whatever that the hole is this way, but only come back to it if nothing else seems to be working. Again, the last thing you want to do is to corner yourself. So there you have it, friends. How to survive the back rooms in six easy steps. One, have a maze-solving strategy. Two, mark your path using whatever's on you. Three, equip yourself with anything and every... Sorry, the last chapter of this video video right you can't see it but it's just called scotland it's like it's just called scotland which i'm very confused about but anyway we'll, we'll, we'll carry on thing that you can find four ceilings wires and air ducts are going to be your friend five never take a one-way path always have at least two ways out and six if you absolutely have to use the disjointed confusing layout defensively when being attacked using all those tactics you have the best chance possible of escaping this nightmare scenario and hey look on the bright i'm lighting the room up slightly with benson he's keeping me safe right now Side. If you I'm ever get hold thirsty, him. you have as much moist carpet water to drink as you could possibly want. But hey, it's February, and if there's anything scarier than the back rooms, it's Valentine's Day. But it's not February, not mate. It's not. I'm, I'm, I think I think we're done. I think we're done, Matt. <sighs> right. Um. What's this? I want to see whether he has like any um, any thing like law bits that I missed. I'm more interested in this video than the other one. It's so cool how he works. You can just go... You just squish him and he goes on and off. He's such a cool little light. I love him. Benson's sick. It's gonna be Matthew Patrick. It's not even gonna be a creepy monster. He's gonna come over jump scares and go, Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory! Never mind. I was wrong. I was actually wrong. Can't believe it. Really thought it was going to go. Hello, <laughs> Internet. Welcome. To <laughs> Hello, Internet. To Film Theory, the show that reminds you that all hey, the previous Tori. pastas the came from the 1980s. Hulk Hogan, he's got pasta mania in the Mall of America. I want to try to get a word with him. Pasta mania has got all my Hulkamaniacs running wild. And I've eaten so many Hulkaroos and Hulkaroos, I kind of feel sorry. Fun fact, that restaurant would go on to receive three Michelin stars. Well, I hope you... That's, that's good. Wait. No, pasta mania is kind of good. Holy! You carbo loaded on that pasta mania, Hulkamaniacs. Cause tonight we're no clipping once more into the back rooms. The analog horror series right here on YouTube produced by Kane Pixels. Last time we wandered through these jaundiced hallways, we were looking for a means of escape. A way to survive was the born, endless Jordan. maze of humming fluorescence and soggy carpets. But today, we're looking for something different. We're looking for lore. Specifically, we want answers. At this point, Kane's series is three months old. 
old, and in that amount of time, he's given us 10 videos full of creepy mysteries for us to chew on. What are the back rooms, really? Did humanity create them? Have they just been a parallel dimension all along? And what about the dead man that we find hidden in the middle of the maze covered in a violent explosion of black? Who is this guy? What is this guy? And most mm. importantly of all, should we be concerned about that monster roaming the halls? Probably. Probably, right? Usually a giant roaring threat is something to be concerned about. So throw on your hazmat suits, friends, and grab your tow lines. Today, we're going in deep. First, let's talk about timeline, shall we? Part of what makes the lore of the back room so hard to crack in an initial watch is that it follows the tried and true formula of series like The Walton Files, Mandela Catalog, and FNAF. The story is just told out of order. The very first upload of the series, Back Rooms Found Footage, actually comes last in the timeline. Oh yeah, when I said this is the most recent, I was wrong. Obviously, the first video is the most recent, but then... The first video just kind of sets up for the story of the past. Is Currently, September 23rd, 1996. So, through the power of reorganization, let's recap what we know in the order that we know it. Our story begins in 1982 with Async, a corporation conducting scientific research into magnetism and or electromagnetic field generators under government contract during the Cold War. In our first video of the series, Prototype, a video that, no joke, released as I was writing this paragraph, so forgive me if I miss anything in it, we get oh, our first event of the series. A metallic marble is surrounded by what appears to be electromagnetic field generating tubes. Notice how the shape and general design matches diagrams for similar real life generators. Oh, wow. The okay, system nice. Fires up, and just like that, the ball is gone. Presumably teleport. Oh, the ball disappeared, so they teleported a ball to the back rooms intentionally. Shit. I didn't notice that. To some Interesting. Space within space, thereby making the ball a sub. <laughs> I want to name the monster. Their name is Flint Stewart. Why? Space emissary, if you will. I hate myself for that joke. But then again, you don't pass up the opportunity to make the very rare subspace emissary joke. Anyway, by July of 1988, Async, emboldened by that initial success, has given their distortion field experiments a room-sized glow-up called Project KV31. According to the video, the third test, the goal of these experiments was to solve quote all future storage and housing needs. So it seems like the foundation of our story here is that science discovers an entire other universe of endless space, and our first thought was, hey, it's a good place to store our junk. In total, it is. Conducts it is. Five I mean, it is, seven. though. Let's not be rude about it. I mean, no offense to the, the back rooms, but it is a good it's a fucking bunch of rooms. Stick your shit in there. Big space. Fuck it, you know? Also, charge people a bit of dosh to put this stuff there. Money. More money. Right, I go. Here's a tenner, and I'll yeah, I'll, I'll throw your old PlayStation in there. You don't have to keep it in your house anymore. Money. This is why. <laughs> this is why I'm rich and you're not. As you know, Andrew Tate, you know that guy. You know, uh, this is a genuine quote of his. He's like, if you're a, if you're an adult man and you haven't made a million dollars, what the fuck are you doing? You haven't made a singular million. What the fuck are you doing? I was like. You 13 months. No, because he has like a half British, half American accent. He's like, if you haven't made a singular million. Wait, no, it's like, I can't even, like, if you, haven't, if you haven't made a singular million, what the fuck are you doing? No, because I can't find a middle ground. I can't find a middle ground for Andrew, Andrew Tate. Because he has like a half British, half American accent, and I can't find it. I wish I could, but I really can't. Has to try and open a portal to this subspace before. Yeah, that was this genuine thing. He literally said, like, if, you, if you're if you an adult man and you haven't made a million, a singular million, he says, like, you should have m multiple, but if you haven't even made one, the fuck are you doing? I thought it was like, that's insane. Such a jaded worldview. It's fucking the sixth mad. finally proves successful. On October 17th, 1989 at 5.04 p.m. Pacific, with the generator beefed up and something redacted being introduced into something else redacted, the threshold gets cranked up and blasts out a light show that seems to almost shake the facility apart. When the smoke clears, the back rooms themselves have finally appeared on the other end. Async has achieved first contact. Unfortunately, that's not the only thing that happened. That date and time, 5.04 p.m on October 17th, 1989, also happened to be, in reality, the moment of magnitude 6.9, lol, hit the central <laughs> coast of California. Don't lol, my people died! Why I laughed? You made me laugh at a bad thing! That's an evil MatPat moment. 63 and injuring thousands more. The timing height. here Can't is clearly not- Can't wait to fight God in the back rooms. 
Yo, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you for 13 months. Not meant to be a coincidence. As a secret unlisted video on Kane Pixel's channel gives us real archival news footage from the Loma Prieta quake, including a map highlighting the location of the earthquake's epicenter, the Santa Cruz Mountains. In short, we now know where our async test facility is hidden. It's here, the epicenter of that devastating quake. And from that point forward, the world appears to be glitched. We see in the video missing persons that from October 1989 onward, huge numbers of ordinary people just start to go missing as they no clip through reality, falling into this newly opened backrooms meta space. All the while, Async is slowly exploring this new environment. On February 3rd, 1990, they have their first major discovery, a mysterious dead body coated in what appears to be some type of black mold or aged blood splatter. So far in the series, he remains as an unidentified John Doe, but my suspicion is that this is actually Nicholas Bolton, a missing person that we see at the top of the upload. Notice a few of the details here. First, he's not wearing a hazmat suit, which clearly tells us that this is not an async employee oh yeah well that was obvious though. That, that's obvious though no clipped into which was this true story not at all no no it isn't it is fiction it's just they tied in real life events to make it more believable which is cool. I like that story, right? The back rooms. Second, compare their physical appearances. Notice the wider nose, tall forehead, the hoodie, just like we see on Nick. I like, I like tall. I like the word tall. Tall forehead. I'm gonna, if you ever want to comment on my forehead again, make sure you call it tall. Not big, right? It's not big forehead, it's tall. So I'm gonna start saying to Wilbur, he just has a tall forehead. He's tall, he's a tall guy, he's got a tall forehead. Makes sense. I like that. Uh, I like that. I was very kind. This is missing poster. Around the same time, we also see that Async's government contract appears to have been cancelled. In the next video autopsy report, we get quick cuts of various images on a screen. One image here is the top line of a document with the words contract termination. Things Oh, I didn't spot that. That's very interesting. I did not spot that at all. They're looking too great for async, and they're about to get worse. Just shy of one month later, the fourth member of an async exploration crew is lured away from the rest by mysterious voices in the walls and ceiling, only to see his team glitch out of space when he tries to rejoin them. Guys, do you hear this? Hey, guys, do you hear this? Hey! Oh. Guys? Yeah. Now lost, he wanders the hallways, stumbling across a bizarre theater with burned remains in the middle of the floor, as well as a smaller crawl. Oh, is that what that is? I figured that was like more of the fungus. With non and not the Rick Ross type. Floors, forest print wallpaper, and the facade of a house with farm equipment out front. As he continues his search, we see what looks to be an exit into an async control room, considering his keycard works on the door and his sounds of relief. But it winds up empty, and his presence triggers a red alert. End of upload. About a week later, on March 5th, Async rigs cameras to motion sensors to capture the action of what's going on in the back rooms while people aren't there. We see Async crew members constructing more walls. Yeah, cause that's what the back rooms needed. More rooms. Humanity, you dumb. Later that night at 3am, the- <laughs> That was like a fucking 2010 meme. I, I can imagine a cat, like a little derpy, like a lead up cat that says, Humanity, you dumb. Fucking hell. Cameras capture a bizarre dark Humanity, you dumb! Fucking Jesus Christ. I can just picture it. You just picture it, can't you? This fucking 2010 meme. Ray William Johnson shows off on equals three. It's the new big meme. Humanity, you dumb. The humanity, you dumb cat equals three reference. <laughs> Oh shit, it now. seems to be moving along the walls or the ceiling. Looks like the back room. We should start that. We should just start posting that. Guys, you know what? Whenever you see something on Twitter, twitter.com that you don't agree with, I'm going to make the image right now, literally. Watch this. Uh, cute derp cat. Right. Let's just... I want him to be passing some judgment. This guy, he's perfect. He's perfect. He's perfect. Literally. Uh... There we go. There we go. <laughs> you know, I want the image flip logo as well. Fuck it. Uh, okay. Right. And then I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tweet this out on the alt with lols. Like watch, I'm just gonna tweet this out on my alt Twitter. Just with the caption being lol. LOLS Right, you ready for this? I'm gonna tweet this, right? Not the Tommy, I don't even remember what, what was in there to be honest. I'll pull that back up and see what what I don't know Tommy in it. 
Is that Tommy pick? There might be one in there. I have no idea. I saved so much, so many images to fucking Photoshop. I have no idea what you're talking about, but it messaged me about it. I don't know what that is. Anyway. Actually, this is so ran random. Lols. Yeah, there we go. I just I just want people to start replying with this. Just you, whenever you see anything that just remotely is a bit weird, right? Just start using this. I, I really want this to take off for no reason. For no reason. All right? I just want it to take off. I think we can do this. Easy. No, we don't. No, we can't use emojis. Emojis didn't exist. Emojis weren't a thing yet. We had XD, all right? I just want it to take off, all right? Fuck it. Fuck it. That's how we're going to do this. That's how we're going to do this. I'm not going to figure out what the fuck people, pic picture people were talking about in my camera roll. Uh... People looking at Tommy. Oh, there's a few in there. There's a few. There's a good couple. I hope I didn't show the one of my passport. That, however, would be a problem. All right, don't be shocked if this vod disappears. Uh, anyway. Monsters been watching some YouTube videos. Don't explore the. Shouldn't have drawn attention to it. I'm being a bit of a moron here. Well, let's just XD the pain away. Come on, we carry on watching. Back rooms at 3 a.m. Asterisk scary. Asterisk you will cry. Asterisk I might. Shooketh. Which then brings us all the way back to the first ever upload, Kane's original found footage video. In 1996, a young cinematographer named Kane no clips through the ground, falling into the back rooms, where he encounters some kind of monster that attacks and presumably kills him, sending his camera falling through yet another clip and back out into reality. If you go frame by frame during this moment, you can actually see Kane's whole body here being attacked by the monster as the camera falls. It's a very cool little detail that I noticed. So anyway, that's the story that we've gotten thus far, but it leaves plenty of major questions for oh, okay, us to speculate more, more, about. What's I thought the that was it. Of the back rooms? What is the monster roaming the halls? Why are there voices and farmhouses hidden inside the walls? Well, let's start with the monster. Is it human? Doesn't appear to be. You can probably also eliminate animal and bird. An insect? Nah. <laughs> animal and bird. Birds, as if birds aren't animals. <laughs> you can also eliminate animal and bird. <laughs> Maybe some because kind of they're actually spy drones. Because they're actually spy drones made by the government. Because they're not animals. They're not. Ar they're, they're they're artificial. <laughs> animals and birds. I like that. In a robot, it looks a little bit like one if you squint, but then again, I've always got animatronics on the brain, so I'm a little bit biased. I've seen some people suggest that it could be a ghost or an energy monster. No. What the fuck are those people on? It's neither. Energy Clear. monster, not monster energy. Regardless, <laughs> both options because it has a physical form. It is able to throw objects and grab cane. No, I think the back rooms has already told us what this thing is. It's a mutated bacteria. Now, I know, bacteria are supposed to be really small, literally microorganisms, whereas the backroom's monster is anything but. However, one thing that bacteria love to do is form colonial organisms, animals that are actually groups of smaller animals all Voltron together. TLDR, I think that is what we're looking at here. A colonial organism composed of bacteria, possibly one that's been further mutated by exposure to- Brittany, thank you for the two hey, Specifically, hey. a mutated strain of hay bacillus. That may seem specific, but there's a definite reason for it. You see, after async discovery, covers the mysterious dead body, they conduct an autopsy report on it, confirming that it's been decayed at uneven rates due to having been overtaken by a mutated strain of bacteria. It's like portions of the body stopped decaying and, and were sustained. Four more billion bacteria in a, <laughs> in a trench coat. I like that, four more billion bacteria. Uh, samples of some material 
It seems to be closer to a mutated strain of simple hay bacillus. It should be completely benign, but really, I, I, I don't know what to make of this. Well, don't worry, Doc, because I do. You see, hay bacillus, also known as bacillus subtilis, is pretty darn common, living in places like the human and cow digestive systems. Okay. It's a rod-shaped bacteria that's generally pretty harmless. And science Oh, it's a waifu. That's how we know. It's used a lot in experiments because it's very easy to genetically modify. This is one of the all purpose cultures you'll find in almost any lab using bacteria for research because it's durable, it's manipulable, and it adapts in a very elastic Why are the words way. stretching? That was it's weird. So strong and resilient, it's been used to test out extreme environments like outer space, which I call out because later in the video autopsy report, we see that quick montage of images I mentioned earlier, and it includes close-ups of bacteria cultures along with rocket and space imagery. That was the kidney. That's the kidney cool. image. No, he's wrong, isn't he? That's the kidney image. That's not a close-up culture of bacteria, is it? I think he's wrong close here. Close-ups of bacteria cultures along with rocket and space imagery, all seeming to relate to this very idea. Oh, yeah. And it's oh, Jack leaked his naked Mario image. Yeah, so if you must know, I have a Mario Kart Discord called Manifold Kart. It's for streams where I do Mario Kart. And the, uh, the image for that Discord is naked Mario. Um, yeah, that is... That is, uh, that, so if anyone saw the image of Naked Mario on my hard drive, that's exactly the reason why. Also been used by Every image I have is very explainable. Between 1950 and 1970, the U.S. Army released aerosolized bacteria believed to be harmless over populated areas of the country without telling anyone. All to study what the impact might look like if an enemy ever tried something similar. Another test was conducted on the New York subway system in 1966, utilizing our little hay bacteria. They kind of just dumped it in through the sewer grates and people dusted it off their shoulders. Here's the thing, Army. When you're on a New York Wait, sub dump, I, I zoned. New York sub impact might look harmless over... I completely zoned out. Close ups Sorry. of bacteria cultures along with rocket and space imagery, all seeming to relate to this very idea. Oh, yeah, and it's also been used by the military. Between 1950 and 1970, the U.S. Army released aerosolized bacteria believed to be harmless over populated areas of the country without telling anyone, all to study what the impact might look like if an enemy ever tried something similar. Another test was conducted on the New York's. Wild. Fucking America is like some fucking dystopia, man. Scary fucking country. That and like fucking MK Ultra and shit. You guys, I like I either either Britain is better or we cover it up better, right? Because you've got a lot more freedom of information. I think that's the re this is the thing. This is the thing that worries me about the world. This is gonna get deep, but we know all this shit about like CIA, you know, uh, unclassified CIA like experiments and shit, all this fucking crazy shit that the US government have done. Um, that is just wild, wild. But the U.S. has so much freedom of information that basically no other nation has. And what worries me is, what if every nation just does this shit and we just don't know because it's very covered up? Where, at least with the U.S., we know, you know? That or the U.S. is just genuinely worse. I can't figure out which is true. But uh, either way... Fucking scary. Don't like it. Subway system in 1966, utilizing our little hay bacteria. They kind of just dumped it in through the sewer grates and people dusted it. This government covered up a lot of shit, yes, but it gets unclassified. This is the thing. What if everyone else is just better at covering shit up? And like, instead of being better than them, what if they're just better at covering shit up and actually just do just as bad shit? off their shoulders here's the thing there's no way of saying there's like no way when you're on a new york subway the biggest biological threat isn't the sketchy bacteria powder that you're dumping on us it's the guy <laughs> open mouth hacking into my face during rush hour anyway all this about durability and space and genetic mutation makes me think that our monster is a walking roaring bacteria culture surviving in the back rooms and evolving by coming into contact with the humans that keep no clipping in and that's not just speculation either kane has seemed to confirm parts of this recently on his ko-fi account which is basically like his patreon he dropped this picture of the monster explicitly labeled as bacteria some oh cool yeah it's basically confirmed that that's tells funny. me you're gonna need some more than antibiotics to kill that bacterial infection now that is what i call biological warfare so that's a little bit about the monster but then what are the back rooms themselves what exactly are they and what's their nature telling us about the world this story is set in well when talking about internet urban legends to base a video series around the back rooms is still pretty new the original meme dates to 2019 the lore and branching args all come up later and these videos have all gone up in the last few months this is a 
brand new evolving concept, but the bigger idea that it's grounded in, that the world we know has secret hollow spaces behind the scenes that we aren't supposed to enter, that idea goes way back into ancient mythology and folklore, probably as old as the human psyche itself. The ancient Greeks believed that spirits of the dead and plenty of other things inhabited an entire underworld of caves and caverns. The 19th century French occultist Joseph Alexandre Saint-Yves Marquis de Levendre, how's that for a name, advanced what he claimed was evidence of an inner world inside the earth itself called Agartha, that some people still think is a thing today. Even the idea of just ordinary maintenance tunnels- Baffling. And Baffling that people could just believe that. Baffling that people would be like, mm, yes, yes, the world is hollow shafts all over the world being connected to a more sinister purpose was part of the background mythology in Jordan Peele's horror movie, Us. It's a very familiar looking wallpaper. But oh, it is all, interesting. The rooms is probably most similar to the work of mid 20th century sci-fi horror creator Richard Matheson. He wrote the stories that inspired I Am Legend and The Incredible Shrinking Man. I never watched I Am Legend, I really need to. As well as many, many episodes of Star Trek and Twilight Zone, including the infamous Gremlin on the Wing episode with William Shatner. It's a goblin, it's a ghoul, it's a ghoul of some kind, it's on the wing! Importantly for us today, he wrote Little Girl Lost, an episode of The Twilight Zone that was so iconic it would be parodied by The Simpsons years later in one of their Halloween episodes using really expensive for the time 3D animation. It's like, uh... It was, I remember that episode. Hello? What? Oh, is that the food? Thank you. I'll be done in a second. Too. Nearly, I'm not yet. Yeah. You wanna say hi to him? I don't know how much chili you want, so I just put it in here. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I'll be out in a minute. Oh, do you want this for me? I don't want you to have a hot dog, a cold dog. I won't. I'll be done in a week. The video's okay. later. Yeah. Alright. Thank you, then. No problem. Hi, chat. I made food. Wait, do you want to show chat the food I made? Boop. Well, what is it? Really see it? It's stir fry, like noodles with coriander and peanuts and stuff and chili. And I'm gonna be eating it because I'm yeah. a hungry boy. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Nikki. Did anyone see the movie Tron? No. 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 Ash. I mean, I mean, no. In both versions of the story, a character accidentally finds themselves passing through an imperceptible rift between our dimension and another, unable to find their way out, getting lost in a vast, confusing, repetitive maze. Sound familiar? Really similar to the idea of falling into the back room. I really liked that Simpsons episode. The CGI was super cool. Rooms. In fact, the only real difference between all these stories is the terminology involved. For the original Backrooms lore, they say that you've no-clipped through reality, a phrase borrowed from video games to describe when solid graphical elements pass through one another in a way that the program doesn't intend, resulting in a player character ending up in an empty space outside of the quote-unquote level box. This sometimes allows you to skip around and cheat, especially when you're talking about older games when developers were still figuring out how to make 3D work. Now, Kane Pixels' Backrooms has yet to make any explicit reference to this. We have never heard the phrase no clipping, and we have not once no, that's seen true, any references actually. to video games or digital worlds. In that's fact, Kane's series is- I think that's a good thing. I think that's a good thing, though. Like, I think that's- I think they just use no clip as like because it, it was posted to 4chan and most people there would understand the lingo, but I think it's it's a good thing. concept of the back rooms and layering on a science fiction rationale to ground it in a very believable reality. And yet the video game stuff, I think this is exactly what he's building towards. And the oh, key really? is right here at 545 in the very first upload. Check out the rope. It's sitting there, just sitting right there. At first, I thought nothing of it. It's just garbage on the ground, whatever. But then one month later, we get this at the midpoint of informational video as the lost AC sync employee explores the smaller crawl space with forest wallpaper he stumbles across the facade of a farmhouse and near it is this an axe leaning against the wall again a single Daisy, thank you for the just sitting there you months, you? waiting to get Hello, picked Jack up Manifold. so we're wandering through a maze made that's me me for real pictures, stalked by a monster and random useful objects are just sitting there out in the open on the ground waiting to get picked up no real context around them it looks a lot to me like a video game the kind of video game you might no clip in or out of. To me, this whole area with the tree texture wallpaper, the facade of a house on the wall, the random old time farm tools that just look slightly geometrically off, this looks like the exact way older 3D video games, I'm talking PlayStation 1 era, would use polygons and flat Hold on a second. Oh, okay. No, sorry. Texture. 
goodness to try and year, render month, outdoor outdoor Yo, thank you for the year sub. Lovebox. Appreciate it. They would paint the walls to look like trees. They would oh, What's this? Sorry. I was zoned. Up. No real context around them. It looks a lot to me like a video game. The kind of video game you might no clip in or out of. To me, this whole area with the tree texture wallpaper, the facade of a house on the wall, the random old time farm tools that just look slightly geometrically off, this looks like the exact way older 3D video games, I'm talking PlayStation 1 era, would use polygons and flat textures to try and render outdoors and nature settings within level box designs. They would paint the walls to look like trees. They would paper the sky blue with textures. They would stick a house facade onto a giant rectangle to surround the door that they want you to go into. Check out the wheelbarrows, specifically the shadows of the wheelbarrows. Notice how they don't really move or shift position as the bright flashlight beam moves? Well, this certainly could be just 3D animation issues. It also reflects how many early video games couldn't or didn't use dynamic shaders. Shadows, if they existed at all, tended to be fixed and painted onto textures. This saved on processing power, but also gave objects a bit of a flat look. There's even a point where our async employee leans in close to the wheelbarrows where it looks like the wallpaper pixel smears into just color lines. Again, like you'd see in a video game with texture mapping on the fritz. So if the back rooms is indeed the space you go to when you no clip through the ground, like we see Kane do in episode one, then we're looking at evidence that reality itself on our side of the threshold is also a simulation. It could very well be that this whole series is just a modern take on the matrix, a simulation that- I believe that. I don't like his description of it being a video game, but I, I do believe that there's some sort of like implication that the like like you know realizes they're in I, I do I do believe that implication that perhaps like the world is, is a simulation it opens the door to the back rooms they're finding a storage area for the extra unused ass sorry the scat the, the elbow scabbard didn't fully fall off so I just caught it on my chair and it really hurt so I apologize Sets, the procedurally generated world, the levels that just haven't quite made the cut yet. As Kane explores the various levels in the series' first upload, we see office supplies and warehouses, but also residential style railings and exteriors of buildings that are clearly indoors. Hardwood floors, repeating. Ozurlo, thank you for the prize. It's a mishmash of random assets, like when you're exploring a library of 3D assets from something like a game engine. All of reality being a simulation would also explain the voices that lure the async employee away in an informational video. Listen to the sound. These aren't voices that are explicitly trying to lure him away. It's not sinister in any way. It's just general white noise of a busy office or a party. Almost as though reality is breaking through. Well, he's- You also that creature mimics. Like, the, the fucking fungus creature mimics. So I'm not- I'm not sold on that idea quite yet. It's not- it's not a bad idea, but I'm not sold on, on it. A computer, an office party is going on one layer of reality up. But outside of the wall textures and random objects just- Potentially. Just open like a video game, there's mm. one piece of evidence that really clinches it for me. Something that gets me to raise my eyebrow. Notice the date on this upload. February 29th, 1990. Here's the mind blow. That can't be correct. There is no such day in existence. February has 28 days, and 1990 was not a leap. Year. Hey, you sussy baka. To me, this wasn't a mistake. Kane sometimes, you know, I, I, whoever the game theory, the film theory editor is, they just make some weird choices sometimes that just kind of throw me out. That's okay, Already though. First it's all right. To happen on a day when a major real-world earthquake occurred. The dates in this series matter. It, tells it does me definitely... I must admit that is peculiar. ...that we're existing in a reality different from our own. One where a February 29th, 1990 can exist. No, I'm not now. I'm not now with you on that. It's a simulated reality, and the back rooms is the boundary. I think it's maybe something to do with the time warp between or something worlds, like where the separation becomes just a little bit thinner, allowing things like office voices and who knows, maybe even a virulent bacteria into the simulation. Am I right? Will async be able to break? I think it's an interesting point to point out that February 29th, 1990 doesn't exist. I do bear in mind the dates have correlated with the real world, so you would imagine he check that, but. Who knows? Maybe it was just a small mistake. Through the boundary, it's doable. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But hey, that's just, just a, a theory. A film, film theory. theory. That was pretty good. I enjoyed that map, Pat. You got a like from me. Take care, everyone. Uh, bye-bye.